Minecraft is a game that I, among many others, have grown up with, and it's been around for many, many years, but as time has passed and more updates and changes have come out, many have begun to question if there is a decline in Minecraft as a whole. So I wanted to ask myself that question and take a look for myself. As usual, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Updates are at the front of this question. Many question if the updates are actually getting worse, smaller, lazier, or just getting lower in quality. However, I have asked myself this question repeatedly, and I have had to rewrite this section of the script multiple times because it's honestly very hard to answer that. Let's just talk about the three kinds of updates. Major updates, minor updates, and baby additions. Major updates are updates that change fundamental elements of the game and overhaul large portions of the game. Take for example the 1.9 update, which, you know, updated combat and reworked all of that stuff and added some end stuff. Uh, take for example, you know, the 1.14 update that made villagers far more rewarding and much more central to the player experience and had a bigger importance, and also added abuse for pillagers, I guess. And the 1.16 update that changed the entire nether dimension and reworked it entirely. Uh, the 1.13 update that changed the ocean. The 1.18 update that changed the entirety of the world generation and the caving experience and how players will progress as well. And, you know, you get the idea. These are major updates. They rework and add things, completely changing a thing to, like, to the, like, that is a core element of the game. And these changes you will probably feel, at least if you're playing survival, everywhere. Like, like the nether update you're going to feel everywhere in the nether. The world generation change you're going to feel everywhere. Combat update you're going to feel everywhere. Villager update you're going to feel everywhere in the villages and in general it's just more rewarding and all that. You get the idea. So yeah. Now on to minor updates. What is a minor update? Minor updates are kind of these additions that really only apply to like small bits of the game and tend not to make that big of an impact on the player experience as a whole. Not much of like the core game is really changed and it's more like, you know, some extra content. Uh, you know, think like, you know, the 1.19 update because it didn't really change like caving. It just added some stuff like in an extreme mountain biome and rewarded the player for crouching around and using wool. The 1.20 update added a new biome and a brush that nobody really cares about. You know, you get the idea. Oh, not to mention 1.15, the smallest update in the game just added bees. Just literally just bees. These updates are things that don't affect like the core gameplay, but just add stuff and you know, just little nice little things. And they're, they're more like optional things because you don't need the cherry blossom biome or the trial chambers or the bees. They're just little side things for players who really want to find them and go for them and use them. You know, biomes, structures, maybe some new blocks. I, you, you get the idea. Now, baby additions are just like these little, like, tiny things, like, you know, like 1.20, they add, like, the dog armor that I don't see anyone using, or, like, change the look of bats, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's not hot fixes though, but you get the idea. Okay, so now, we have those three things established, why does it matter? Well, you see, for a while, Mojang had this thing where they'd release a major update, and then it'd be a minor update. 1.14 changed the entire village system and also a bunch of other things, not to mention I totally didn't mention stone cutters, grindstones, all of- they, they changed a lot with that update, let's be real here. And then the next update it was just adding bees. What, and then after that they added- they did they change the entire nether. And then after that they began to change the caving experience, but just added, you know, a new biome and a little couple other small things. And then right after they changed the entire world generation as a whole, and the Y level. And all that stuff. You remember that. I'm sure you do. And you get the general idea. Every every other update was a big one, and then the following one would be just a little change. However, as of recent, they have stopped this and began to give us these more minor updates. You know, the cherry blossom biome, and like a little brush to find pot shards. You know, updates that I added this like cool guy who really only resides in this tiny portion of the map that's really, really, really hard to find. And it's kind of just underwhelming if you use wool on everything and honestly kind of breaks progression if you just abuse the fact that wool just works on everything. You know, updates that added a structure for a weapon that you cannot really use for a majority of fights. It is ex The mace is absurdly strong, but not really because you can almost never find an actual practical use for it. You can only really find a use for it if you, in like, make something have a use for it. You, you get the idea. I mean, these are things that are still, like, a, you can still play with these new things, you know, there are more blocks being added, but nothing of the game is really changing as that, that much. The game hasn't really changed, and it's not really going to make players excited to maybe even, like, start a new world, and that's the main reason players have felt like the updates have been getting worse. I mean, if you played 1.18.2 and compared it to 1.21, you played these two back-to-back, -back, the differences in survival are almost impossible to discern, and players have pointed this out. If you played 1.18 and played 1.21, the, the only changes you will see are just a couple biome things and maybe some, like, new blocks and stuff like that. And maybe, like, if you're really feeling wacky, you get the mace. I don't know. There's barely that much that has actually changed. Not to mention, with the new freaking like, it's not helping at all that the bundles of bravery updates 
players are just going to get more disappointed, and we kind of have in a way. They're adding an item that's been in the game for creative only, yeah, so that's nice, I guess. They're adding a retextured dark oak forest with a really wame, like, really wame, really lame weeping angel with the strength of a toddler. They added hardcore mode for the buggiest version of Minecraft right now, and you get the idea. The only thing that people are really looking forward, I think, is like the actual combat reworks. That that'll probably be nice. So yeah. However, it should be pointed out that if you are a creative player or enjoy the like map making side of things, these updates have not really been that bad. For example, they've added more data-driven things, they've added different blocks for people to use in creative, things like that. And so those updates have been good for like, I guess, creative, but other than that, I don't really think anything that much has really changed, per to say. Another major thing that I feel like is something that actually should be pointed out is the monetization, which is primarily a Bedrock thing. Bedrock has a marketplace that you as a player can spend real money on buying cosmetics, skins, maps, and now mods. Now many people don't really care much about the map skins and cosmetics because those are something you can still add for free, like you can get skins on freaking planet minecraft for free, right? It doesn't really matter, and the same with maps, and you know, it's still weird that they monetize these things, but it's not really that big of a deal, and plus the maps tend to usually be pretty high quality and stuff like that, they're usually very cool actually. Uh, it's something that, you know, I kind of raised my eyebrow for a little bit, Maybe mainly not the maps, but like, cosmetics, you know? It's all optional, so I can't really complain. It's kind of like a Fortnite store. I, I Like, what, what's it gonna do? It's just gonna add, like, little skins that you don't have to buy. It's not gonna change the game. However, all of this stuff about monetization is really more important for what I'll be talking next, which is uh, about Microsoft themselves. Another small thing I'll point out is that, as I kept mentioning, Microsoft is asserting more control over the game, and Microsoft is probably trying to control the game, like the game, by removing its freedom and, and increasing its marketability. For example, uh, there was that thing where any server that used any kind of gun was in complete trouble, and they would either have to find some workaround or shut themselves down. That was added to the EULA or something like that. Uh, Bedrock Edition has a lot of these like new things to censor profane things from the game rather than leaving it up to server hosters. So if you went on a server, now they automatically censor these things. Which is fine, I guess, on servers that like maybe don't have like some kind of like if it was something that you could toggle on and off or like something like that, you know. Cause I, I feel like that's fair to a degree, you know, you don't want a little kid being exposed to like slurs on 2B2T, which you know, you get the idea. But the thing is, is that it it includes private games or even just single player. In fact, you can get yourself kicked from your own game from saying stuff in single player. And it's clear that Microsoft is probably just doing this to make brands more likely to do stuff with them rather than because they're like actually trying to protect the player. Editing me here, something I completely actually forgot to mention is the fact that they had also basically, Microsoft had basically forced Mojang to kill all of the other Bedrock, anything that is a private server on Bedrock that is not hosted by Mojang or I guess Microsoft themselves, they basically forced them to shut down. How? By removing a critical file that is used by all of these Bedrock servers, something called, the, I think it's called the PDB file. It's basically used by Bedrock servers to actually keep them protected, you could say. I, I don't know too much about it, but I know it's really important for them to have, I guess, plugins for things like that. I, I just know it's a really important aspect of modding. And they had basically gotten rid of this file, and the reason, the only reason I can imagine them even doing this is for Microsoft to assert more control about what players actually can do on Minecraft. And the only reason they didn't make the same change to Java was because Java is basically made to be modded and to be hosted and things like that. It's impossible, I think it would be impossible for them to do it to Java, but I know for a fact that they def Microsoft was definitely trying to do something with Bedrock and trying to purposely get rid of these other servers and trying to keep them from getting, I guess, popular or trying to keep players from joining them for A, the reason that I talked about before, like the profanity thing, and also because then they can control what goes on their main servers. So yeah, I, you get the general idea, and there's definitely something Microsoft is doing here. And it's probably with regards to monetization and money. Because trust me, you know, God forbid the Spongebob map didn't come out for Bedrock, you know, that that was so cool, thank God they, they did that, I guess, you know, things. it'll be things like that. And another thing that Microsoft did was add that whole player reporting thing, which is funny because nobody actually uses it. And speaking of Microsoft, I guess, like, changing things, you know, remember how they migrated accounts and all that? Yeah, the only reason I can imagine them doing that is literally to just gain more control over the players that play Minecraft. Things were fine, you know, we're out without it, but Microsoft forced Mojang to make this change. And not to mention all the Skyblock stuff that's happening right now, which is another mess as well. It, that is a serious problem as well. And it's clear that Microsoft is just trying to make money and gain control. 
Lastly, I wanted to talk about community engagement. Now, the first thing I would have talked about if this was like 2022 and 2021 was like the mob votes, but they don't use them anymore, obviously. And you know, despite that, I, I still kind of want to talk about them because I find it interesting that Mojang decided to engage players with like them. They essentially just created a tripartisan system with people screaming and yelling at each other about what is better and why they are right and the other is wrong and then have like large personalities and celebrities endorse a certain party or choice, or mob, I guess. And very literally, I feel like they just added the US election into the community just without the stakes of a country falling apart. And I always felt this was like a really bad idea because with a community, you wanna unify, bring, you wanna unite people. You wanna bring everyone together. You want everyone to be happy as a community. But when they did this, they just made people fight online about which side should win and then everyone regrets it later on. And what do I mean by regret it later on? Phantoms and glow squids. You never want to, you, you regret adding these, don't you? I know you do. And in general, the mobs they kind of added were like, kind of just like mobs for us to look at for a month and then forget about it for the rest of time. Uh, what do I mean by that? Glow squids and armadillos. And I, and I don't mention phantoms because you definitely will always remember phantoms. Now, after the mob votes, you know, they removed them. And then Mojang realized community engagement will be much weaker and the hype is going to be a lot less. So what do they do? They now have a Minecraft Live happen twice a year. The problem is that the updates and content they unveiled this time when they tried it, I guess, was so underwhelming that people just kind of kept spamming stuff in the chat and venting frustrations about things. And uh, yeah, that that was that went pretty. Yeah, that was pretty funny. You know, this is definitely more like a, a small thing in, in the grand scheme of things, but it definitely leads to that sense of decline and is definitely something to point out. I'm gonna be honest though. As I conclude this video, it is completely up to you about if you think Minecraft is declining or not. These are certain points that I've picked out. There are great things, again, the data-driven things, the updates to make it easier for creative players, the things that they've been doing to make, I guess, the community a little bit better by getting rid of the mob votes, I guess. You could say that technically. They've been doing good things, but I do feel like Minecraft is taking a different direction that is not looking too good. But again, that is just Overall, I guess, no matter how objective I make this, it is still an opinion in a sense because I cannot like talk about every positive and every negative. And so I've just picked point like the main things. Again, I, I really did try my best with this one. It was honestly really hard to write the whole update part because you know, with updates, it's so subjective, but whatever, you get the idea. I just hope you guys enjoyed this one. And again, I'd be happy to discuss in the comments. I love doing that with you guys. That's the whole reason my favorite videos are some of the ones that have created the most discussion. And so I hope you guys definitely say your opinions in the comments and I'll be happy to talk with them. And you know, maybe, maybe I'll make another video. Who knows? Anyways, I just hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys next time.